Okay, so I want to talk about this narrative that Eidos women, black caste women, can experience transphobia, which is a false narrative. Basically, they use an example similar to this to um, prove that logic. If we imagine that a, there's a Chinese person and a Filipino person hanging out together, and a, a xenophobic, a Chinese phobic person attacks them because he believes or mistakes them for being both Chinese. That Filipino person still experienced Chinese phobia, even though they're not, actually not Chinese. That's the logic that they're trying to use. The thing is, in a lot of these cases, these people don't actually believe that Eidos women are actually trans. What they're actually doing is taunting and teasing them because they don't meet the appearance standard. I consider it just casteism since um, the privileged caste people have refined light features and the exploited caste people have dark and bold features. So it's casteism. It's teasing and taunting for not meeting the caste standard, the appearance standard, the beauty standard. So these people are being teased and taunted um, to make the person feel better about themselves, to get an, a so-called easy target, and to kind of push these people um, push these people back socially, push them back into the shadows, right? So it it's not actually transphobia, it's just a tactic. Then another thing I hear is that some adults are questioned or asked, are you trans? Because they have certain features or they're presenting themselves in a certain way. Again, that's not transphobia that's uncertainty they're just curious because honestly humans are an androgynous species and they're we're going to be uncertain regardless before even this whole trans thing was in play people have been curious and confused but now that just has been enhanced. And then I'm sure there are the rarer cases where people just assume someone is trans based on their appearance and maybe they are attacked or a slur is tossed, tossed out, which can be transphobia in a sense. It's still just confusion and misfiring, but those are actually the rarer cases. Now, I already mentioned that it's casteism, but if there, if there had to be a term for it, I would call it bold phobia, okay? In our society, in this world, there's a lot of bold phobia. For various reasons, people don't like people with bold features. One, it's casteism. The people who happen to be privileged cast had and have light features, but also refined features, not just facial features, but I'm talking physique as well. They have refined physiques. Um, more suburban, uh, smaller, thinner physiques. While on the other end of the spectrum, people have, they're bold. If the curlier your hair, the more out and up it grows, it becomes bold, right? Um, bold features, nose, lips, um, if it's more square, wider face, but also bold physiques, right? So one of the reasons bold boldness has a stigma is casteism. So that kind of bolsters bold phobia. Another reason is, it's because of our primitive, our primal programming. Um, as people know with bold features, sometimes people will 
uh, I've went up to a cafeteria and they kind of flinch or get a little scared or intimidated. And I can tell it's because of my bold features. That's their primitive primal instincts. They have to come back to their senses, right? Or I've even had people who treat me like some type of quote unquote alpha or like royal. And I could tell it's because of my bold features. They're just responding because it's like these almost dominating features when I'm like, actually, no, I'm just a person. I don't want to be alpha or a royal. I, I want to work and mind my business. So that's another reason for bold phobia. And then that bold phobia is enhanced because we live in, sometimes society can be very stressful, which produces and twisted, which produces a lot of insecure people, anxious people. And if you're insecure, you're, you're going to uh, pivot into your instinctual responses more, which is another reason why people are bold phobic. And then that's enhanced by the propaganda network where a lot of bold people, which is stemming from these other reasons, have a stigma. So then sometimes that comes into play as well. So people are being bold phobic. Okay. Even non ADOS experiences. I heard someone say very tall bold physique. If you're tall, you're going towards the bolder side. Ball, tall beefy physique, they made a post like everyone's intimidated by me, but everyone's scared of me. What can I do? Like everyone's scared of me at work, intimidating me at work. That's kind of bold phobia. And then so West Central African populations generally have bold features. More um, indigenous leaning populations have more bold features, partly because, and then people can sense our athlete, our natural athleticism, which is part of that boldness. They have bold features, right? Um, most time they're tr they're showing a mug shot. They show someone with bold features, a those with bold features, a Latino with bold features, bold phobia. Okay, casteism. I will say that. Another term I would use, if I had to use a term, is androgynous phobic, okay? I do believe that what people with West Central African associated genes and East Asian associated genes are generally more androgynous. First of all, everyone's androgynous. Humans are an androgynous species even down to on a chemical level. People talk, tes talk testosterone, estrogen. Everyone has testosterone. Everyone has estri estrogen. Humans are an androgynous species. And some people are just more androgynous than others. Any population can be more, produce someone that's more androgynous than someone else. But there is a slight higher concentration of that in people with East Asian associated genes and West Central African associated genes. And being androgynous or more androgynous makes us more likely not to pass the standard which is established for all those other reasons. So they'll say, oh, East Asian men are more feminine. Um, Ados women, black ass women, they're more masculine. No, Ados women are not more masculine. Some are more androgynous, but because they're not meeting that standard, whatever, whatever is, whatever those facets that don't meet the standards are magnified and enhanced. So they say these binary terms, masculine and feminine. It's like when an East Asian person is, is explaining that they experience colorism, but to our eyes, they just look light skinned. But because the appearance standard is so strict there, and a lot of people meet that standard there, that 
slightly brown skin that a bit a slightly more melanin is considered dark skin right it's the same concept with um people calling people who are generally more endogenous or who have bold features masculine no you're just the 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 appearance standard is so strict you are blowing it up out of proportion so that's all that's going on this um, microscope is being placed which is picking out parts of people who are more androgynous what it is a lot of adults women are actually what the term beautiful fits them more and i'm not that's not to ego stroke i just mean that objectively what i'm saying is more refined features are cute um, let's go back to the East Asian thing. Males and females, adults, a lot of East Asians, they're cute, right? Because I wouldn't describe them as beautiful. Yes, we can use that term, but in general, they have cute features, okay? Because they're generally more androgynous, ref more refined features, smaller builds, refined smaller features thinner features refined hair that falls flat because it's straight refined so so no adults women are not masculine they're beautiful but people don't like beautiful because for various reasons beauty is not the standard being cute is the standard so these beautiful people, men and women, are called masculine or feminine and just simply because they're not cute. And then in terms of attraction, it doesn't even make sense. First of all, males and females are not attracted to masculine and femini masculinity and femininity. Males are attracted to femaleness and females are attracted to maleness. They're not just attracted to masculinity. Um, it's about aura and energy and a combination of traits and how those combinations of, of traits manifest. For example, do you see how people consider like long eyelashes feminine? But then a lot of, how many of you Eidos women have husbands with like these long camel like eyelashes and that boosts their attraction so you're attracted to femininity no humans are just all androgynous and you're attracted to their maleness their overall thing so that's why it doesn't make sense where when people are like oh they're masculine but they're unattractive this and that it's the same with the East Asian thing. Because there sometimes they will say the males are more girly and pretty and that type of thing. Feminine. But then they'll say the the women, they a lot of them have less curves, flatter chest, androgen generally more androgynous. Yet men recognize their femaleness. And it's not an issue of attraction on that part. So yes, we can be generally more androgynous, not just adults or black ass women. Um, how many of you guys' husbands' thighs put Beyonce to shame? Sorry about it. The eyelashes and etc. Like humans are androgynous. Some people are more androgynous than others so yes uh generally people who are generally more androgynous are going to be confused for being trans more but that doesn't mean they look like a, a manly or girly or it's transphobia that means that trans people generally look more androgynous so then that's where confusion arises which pretty much sums that up so 
But regarding androgyny, I think we should just embrace it. Um, look at what's happening with East Asian related populations. They just decided to embrace it, especially the males and what has happened. Their attraction has skyrocketed. Um, people who are jealous are that are intimidated like some of the jealous guys of other castes, other populations will say, well, they're going. Um, the, well, these female fans are seeing male and they like what they see. So people are going to start recognizing beauty. So that, that's on that.